Hey, Bart Miller Recycling Strong. So I wanna talk about Leadville. So this morning I got up two hours early. You can tell my eyes are bloodshot. I got a lot of stuff in my eyes today. The weather was absolutely perfect. But this morning when we got up, it was about 30 degrees. So it was super cold. So I started off with a, uh, I wish I had it right here, an ASOS full armed. And then I put arm warmers over. And then I had a, uh, I had my jersey over that. And uh, we took off and uh, I started in the Silver Gate and we were, we were really going fast. We did really, uh, the group went really fast. We went out, we started uh, climbing the first climb, went really well. Uh, everybody was really cool. And then as we started to uh, get to the top, it was really, really ruddy this year. They've got a lot of rain and it was really, the rocks were big, lots of rocks and uh, uh, power line super, super rutted and super fast. So we went around that and uh, got to the first aid station. Uh, Kobe was dialed in with the bottles, had everything uh, measured just perfect for me. I hit that, took off and uh, got to the next aid station, I think quicker than they thought I would. But we got set there real quick, started on the climb to Columbine. And uh, the climb went really pretty well. Once again, lots of rocks, lots of big boulders, uh, lots to look out for there. But overall, the climb went pretty good. It was so cool to see the first pro. The first pro came down Columbine. He was probably at least three to four minutes ahead of the second guy. Uh, I'm sure it's Alvin that won today. I don't know that for a fact, but he was the one that was ahead right there, and he was flying. Um, but I don't know who actually, I haven't even looked at results. So Todd Wells uh, was right behind him, and one of those two had to have won, I, I would assume, because they were so far ahead of the other pros, it was crazy. But anyway, uh, they came flying down, which always makes everybody get to the right because the moto comes down, and you have to get to the top. Got to the top, and it was chilly, it was really cold. And so I, I just wanted to get off of there. So we came off of there pretty fast, uh, got to the next, got to the aid station again, and my sunglasses I thought were just, like they were dirty and I couldn't figure it out. And if you can see my right eye, I don't know if you can tell how bloodshot my eyes are or whatever, but I couldn't see out of my right eye even after I ditched the glasses. And uh, so right there, I, uh, I thought to myself, man, do I really want to do this? And then there's a one little steep hill you come to not too far from there. And it was a grunt. And I finally just got off my bike and just thought, you know what? I got to calm my mind and think through this. And so I pushed my bike up it. Just thought, you know what? I'm going to dig deep and I'm going to do that. What would all my cycling strong friends do? And, you know, what would they think if I, you know, if I quit right there? So I dug deep and started pedaling some more. And, and uh, I did fall once on coming down on the single track. A guy was right next to me. I hit a big old rock and down I went. I don't think I tore my shorts, but I might have. Anyway, it wasn't a bad fall, but uh, it, I did fall nonetheless. Uh, the bike ran really good, except I got a little mouse squeak in it for some reason. So every time I turn on the shock, I'd sound like ee, ee, ee. Everybody would look around like, who's got the bike? Who has a problem? Really wasn't a problem. It's just a damper in there. But uh, then I got the top of that. I got back to Kobe and uh, <laughs> I told Kobe, I said, I don't know if I can make this Kobe, man. I'm pretty beat. And he looked at me and says, do you want to do this again next year? Get after it. And so I was like, oh man, what an inspiring little son I have. It really kicked me in the butt to get me going. And so he took off out of there and uh, found a couple guys that I could draft with and work with. They were super nice. We rode real strong through there. We hit power line, and power line was just so rutted and so much going on. A couple of guys had fallen over. So I just got off my bike and thought, you know what? I'm gonna dig deep and I'm just gonna walk this thing. And all I could think about, I went on a hike with my daughter Mercedes. We did uh, a hike one day and my daughter Kenya. And then the next day we did a eczema guides. We did a climb together. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna dig deep. I'm glad I went with those hikes because I knew what it felt like, and so I just started hiking that sucker out. I didn't stop one time. Got to the top, and there was a lady up there that had cold water. Just had her dump it down my back, and Kobe had dumped, you know, had ice on me earlier. 
helped a lot. And then uh, we got through the rest of it and I was at the top and I'll have to admit you guys, it took everything I had to keep my feet just pedaling. Like I so wanted to give up. And when you're in that and you're cycling or in life, you know what it's like. I mean, you hate to admit it and you hate to look at anybody and say, man, I wanted to quit, but I really, really wanted to quit. I wanted to put a foot down, walk a few sections, and I just couldn't do it. I just thought, you know, I gotta keep pedaling. And then I finally thought of Kobe beating me up a hill and I thought, oh man, what if Kobe was right behind me? What would I do? So I just dug deep and all of a sudden my, la my legs, this leg cramped up so bad. I started having tears come down my face and as soon as it give, like it started to feel okay, this leg went after it. I'm like, are you kidding me? What is going on? And they hurt so bad. I was just like, I don't know if I can do it. And I was on another ride with a guy and he just, when he started cramping, he just pushed harder. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. So I just stood up and just started climbing. And all of a sudden they just, they fell okay for a little bit. From that point forth, they, uh, they really wanted to cramp on me, but uh, I just didn't quit kept going and finally got to the top and uh, there was a pro at the top and I've got everything on the file so if you go look at the file you'll be able to see but man I got on this guy's wheel and we descended and I've never descended that fast in my life and I probably should never descend that fast again in my life but uh, he just I just knew he knew where his lines were he was riding real well and I just followed him down and we came down super fast and uh, we made up some good time and I really wanted to hit the goal of 8.30, but at least get the big buckle, as you all know. And uh, we got back in and we did all that. So my Scott bike worked absolutely amazing. I want to tell you, Envy Wheels, on all those hills, I'm in a 32 with the XX1. And just with my wheels alone, I was passing people who had better gearing as far as downhill gearing goes. I passed them. and just felt confident it gave me so much more speed because I had such good bearings and such good wheels so Envy kudos to you all of you know that my whole bike is built with Envy and a Scott setup ASOS I, I did a video earlier this pad that they have in their shorts saved me for this race in so many ways because I didn't adjust my seat and uh, Camelback your bottles without wide open really helps a ton I'm sorry, my mouth's getting so dry with this video, but it's long. But I just wanted to share everything with you as an audience so you know I went through so much pain today, so much time, but the support from you and you guys watching the videos makes it worth it. So many of you reached out and bought my book. Some of you that don't even do Leadville bought the book. Thank you. And thanks for your support and helping me and uh, keeping me excited about these events. And uh, keep cycling strong, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.